everyone, it's Alyssa here from my kitchen and it is time for our spice of the month. For September, we have marjoram. Uh, this is a dried leaf. It is in the same family as oregano, uh, but they taste different. I actually was not sure if we would be able to tell the difference if they were too similar. And, and would this be a waste? But as you see, if you have one of the Spice of the Month pamphlets, there are some tasting notes on there, but the marjoram is definitely different than the oregano. Um, it is definitely sweeter. The oregano is definitely much more peppery. Um, and whereas this has a, a warmer, heartier kind of flavor, when they say that this is sweet and with camphor, that is what it tastes like. I would love to challenge you to do what I did. I tasted a little bit of the dried marjoram and then I tasted a little bit of dried oregano. Really thinking because they're in the same family, because people don't usually use marjoram that maybe there's not that much of a difference, but there is. Uh, and I think that it's going to really give a nice flavor to the recipe that we're doing today. The one that I'm doing is nice and quick and easy. It's a quick way to prepare some great protein. We are doing the marjoram and tomato chicken. So we'll get started with that. I have some of my ingredients prepped right here and we'll finish that up all together and you'll see how quickly this recipe can happen. So I'll bring you a little closer and we'll get started. Okay, so I have chicken breast here. The recipe in your pamphlet, the recipe that I will link in this video, uh, calls for chicken tenderloins. I think the original recipe actually, you could put it on a skewer. Am I thinking of the right recipe? Or maybe I'm thinking of something else. Uh, but you could, you could skewer it and put it on a grill. You could do a grill pan. I'm doing cubed up pieces of chicken breast. And I'm gonna cook it that way. Uh, so I'm gonna add my margarine right here. Just put that right on over. Um, I have a clove of garlic all chopped up. Put that in there. Uh, salt and pepper, of course. Absolutely necessary. to also add about a tablespoon of tomato paste. I'm making a bit of a smaller serving, so uh, my serving size might be a little different if you're following along with your pamphlet, but I'm gonna do about a tablespoon of tomato paste and a tablespoon of olive oil. Or she's here. Okay. Uh, if you're new to my videos, licorice, that meowing is the cat. She's famous. All right, so I'm just gonna put that over this. I think a tablespoon should be enough. Um, and I'm just gonna make sure that I mix this all together and get everything coated. Get all of the chicken coated in the tomato and the olive oil and the spices. garlic and then you let it sit you kind of just let this marinate a little bit put this cover this up and put it in the fridge um, you can let it sit for a couple of minutes if you're in a rush or you can let it marinate for about half an hour and really let the salt uh, help to kind of break down some of those barriers in the chicken and bring the flavor through the chicken um, I am going to cook this up now because while well, I have you here, um, and it's time for me to eat. As you can also tell by licorice's meowing, it's time for her to eat as well. I'm gonna add a little extra tomato paste. It smells great. It smells really, really good. Okay, that's good. 
the smell of the tomato paste and the garlic and the marjoram together, it's, it's just a little different than oregano. Uh, but I know the flavor will really be different. It just doesn't have the same quality as oregano. It's just a different flavor quality overall, which is pretty cool. I, like I said before, I really thought they were going to be the same and they're not. All right, so I have a pan on the stove with a little bit of oil in it heating up right now. So we're going to go move over there and cook this up. Okay, so like I said, I have some oil heating up in the pan and I'm going to go ahead and toss my chicken right in the pan. You can, uh, like I said, let this marinate a little bit longer if you want, anywhere from a couple of minutes to, I think it says about half an hour should be good, but I'm gonna do mine right now because I'm hungry. All right, here we go. If you're doing the full recipe that's in the pamphlet, it calls for eight chicken tenderloins. You can do this in batches. You don't want to overcrowd your pan because then the cook on your chicken is just not going to be as good. Um, it just takes away from the heat and the temperature of your pan. You want to make sure that you really cook everything nicely and evenly. That's my microwave. I have to go with this some kale in the microwave, some fresh kale that I'm just steaming in the microwave. Uh, and then I'll dress it with a little bit of um, maybe oil and vinegar, salt and pepper. You know, the little, a little acid, a little oil, a little fat, just to make sure that everything is cooking nicely. So I'm gonna let this cook up. Um, I'm gonna let this sear and brown up on one side and then I'll toss it and make sure that it is cooked through. So you can see I'm getting some really nice color on here, both from letting it sear and the oil and the tomato. I'm just rotating my pan a little bit because I know I have a hot spot and I want to make sure that every piece gets this nice coloring in here. Um, I have gotten my kale and I kind of treated it the same way I treated my chicken. I did some salt, olive oil, and a tiny bit of tomato paste in there and like I said, I steamed it in the microwave. So this nice bed of kale is ready to go for my chicken whenever it is done cooking. Just a couple more minutes. That's why I like cutting my pieces up nice and small. Okay, I think we are pretty much done here. My chicken feels firm. Um, I know I flipped it about uh, two or three times on each side, giving each side about four to five minutes. Um, it's firm, but it's not too firm, so it'll still be nice and juicy, and everything is looking nice and golden. It looks like my garlic is cooked through. I, of course, I don't want my garlic to burn, so we're gonna go ahead and plate this up, and then I will give it a try. So I'm just gonna grab some of this here and put that right on over my bed of kale. Get that garlic out of the bottom of the pan. It's nice and brown. It's not burned, but it's got great color and caramelization to it thanks to the olive oil and the tomato paste. Perfect. And that'll be great with the kale as well. Okay. All right, time to try. All right, we are ready to try. This is still piping, piping hot. Uh, I'm gonna go in for a piece that's got a lot of good caramelization to it and where I can see a lot of the um, herbs and some garlic. Let's see, this piece looks good right here. All right, so here it is. I got my kale in there. It's got some nice color. It's looking pretty good. It's very hot though. Wow, 
which is great. So you know, it's got all the components that you need. We have some salt, we have the acid from the tomatoes, we have some fat from the olive oil, and we've got a ton of flavor from the pepper and the marjoram and the tomato paste too, of course. It's definitely different from oregano, even cooked. It's just, it's not as warm and heavy as oregano, I guess I would say. Um, the sweetness just complements everything and makes the flavors all nice and round together. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely woodsy, definitely woodsy in a similar way to the oregano, but the camphor comes out so much more than the greenness, I guess, of the oregano and the, the lemony. There's such a difference between the camphor and the lemony, but I'm telling you, you have to do it yourself. You have to do the taste test side by side, have the marjoram and have the oregano, and you'll see what I mean. There's definitely a difference. Um, this is great with the tomato and the garlic. This is really awesome. Mm. It's almost perfumey, I'll tell you that. If you get a piece that has a lot of the marjoram, it's almost perfumey. But with the tomato and the garlic, it it just kind of pulls together and it's such a nice overall spice. It is more perfumey than regular oregano. And I think that's where it goes so nicely with the tomato. Mm-hmm. It's great. I can't stop eating it. Mm. Let me know what you think. Um, it's been so wonderful hearing from everybody who's been picking up the spices at the library, what they think and which recipe they've been enjoying or maybe how they're adapting the recipe and changing it a little bit. I love to hear that. Let me know what you think about this one and if you've tried it before. I definitely proved myself wrong. I thought that there was not gonna be enough of a difference. There is a huge difference. You will know what I'm talking about when you try it. It is so hard to describe, but they're just, I thought they were really gonna be the same. Even some of the descriptions sounded like they were the same. They're not. So I hope that you enjoy this one. Uh, so I will see you for our spice for October coming soon. All right, everyone, I'll see you then. Plenty more programs going on at the library between book cooks and spice of the month, yoga and crafts and children's programs. We will see you at the library. All right, everyone, bye.